Welcome to this course, the BIM Quick Start A102, Modeling Interior Floors. This course is the second in a series of classes that are part of the Quick Start for Open Buildings Designer Architectural BIM Modeler. Just a reminder, there is a hands-on workbook that contains exercises to go along with this series of videos. In this second course, you will model the interior core for a small commercial office building. You'll lay out the walls and doors and then add stairs, elevators, office spaces, and ceiling. And then finally, all the working models will be assembled into a discipline master model. In this first session, we're going to simply do a review of what was learned in the last course, modeling walls, doors, and windows, by modeling the basic layout of the core using walls and doors. In the workbook, you'll see a drawing of that layout with dimensions and, and wall designations, and you can use that to set up your model. Now we're going to start with the lobby floor core, the ground floor core. We could go and open up our A floor lobby DGN model and add the core to that particular model, but we're gonna actually create a new file, a new DGN file and a new model just for the core, and then we'll simply reference those together later. That gives us the ability to have one user working on the core of the lobby while another user might be working on that exterior skin. So that's going to be our first step. Now we do want to make sure that we're in that building examples workspace and that we are in the proper work set, the quick start architecture work set that we set up in the last course. And then I'm going to come down to new file and we're going to create a new file, which we will call a underbar core lobby. So our new file opens to an empty model. One of the first things we'll do is go down to the floor selector and set our floor to the ground floor, since this is the ground floor core. And of course that gives us the grid. So we can have a point of reference and we're, we're really going to model that core in these middle three structural bays here. Now to assist us in the layout of this core, we actually have a sketch that we're going to reference in. And if you go over to the Explore on the Links tab, we're going to expand the project tree, go to the Building Models under Design Models. There are some schematics and one of those is the core layout. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into my view here. So I select it, drag, drop into the view one, and we'll set the attachment method to recommended. Select OK. And note that that added some shapes for where our, our major shafts, the stair shaft and the lift shafts will be, as well as a sketch so we can kind of see what that core looks like. Now that sketch is simply a raster image that gets referenced in. If I come up to my reference pull down, you can see I do have a raster manager. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And this is that sketch that just got referenced in. Note that I can determine which views that sketch displays in. So for instance, I may find I don't need it in my top view. It might be useful in my isometric view. And so I could come here and say, turn off that sketch in most of the views, but leave it on in view one. Then I'll go ahead and save settings to save those settings. So in the workbook, there's a few tips on how to get this laid out. And you should rely on your knowledge from, from laying out the walls and the doors in the previous course. But we're gonna start here with these, these major shafts for the lifts and the stairs. And you'll note in the book that it says that this is a CMU wall and it should be a two hour wall. So we're gonna go up to our wall tool And we have to find that particular wall type now. On the interior partitions, we're going to use single layer walls. And there are several example partitions set up. So you can see here, there's an example CMU two hour. So that's the one I'll select. So it gives me the width of that wall. I'm not going to change that. We do want to check the height. So 
On the interior walls, we want to make sure our walls go up to the underside of the slab. And so we know that our ground floor height is 15 feet or 4,500 millimeters, and the thickness of the slab will be four inches or 100 millimeters, and so we're just gonna subtract that. So if I'm working in US units, my wall height will be 14 feet, eight inches. If I'm working in metric units, it'll be 4,400 millimeters. And then we'll simply place by line, as we did previously, we're going to left justify that wall because we're just going to trace our shapes there. We want to make sure our side offset is at zero because we're just going to trace right along that line. And we're going to select the close wall option just as we did when we placed the exterior of the building because we have a closed shape. So let me just zoom in there and I'm gonna, I'll just start here and snap to the corners. Now remember, I don't have to go back to the initial point. I just right click and it will close that shape. And so pretty quickly trace those shapes. Now, if you find you can't get to a point, remember you can always switch to another view. You can move between the views as you select points. So that places our four shaft walls or stair and lift walls. Next, we'll come over and work. We have a couple of toilet rooms here. So these walls are JIP partitions and, and non-rated. So again, I'm gonna to go to my wall types and look for a partition which is non-rated. So this example partition NR, and we'll select that. So again, I'm not going to adjust the width, but the height, there's a note in the workbook which indicates this wall should be 10 feet or 3,000 millimeters. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in the height. And again, I'll just use the place by line. We'll left justify. In this case, we're not going to have the closed wall option because we're, we're simply going to connect these walls. So I'm going to start down here and we can snap to that corner in that corner to place that wall. Now on this side, as I said, this is offset five feet. This is a case where we could use that side offset and we're gonna offset to the right. And then I can just draw my wall from the corner, but notice it's, it's five feet offset from my placement line. And then we have a wall right down the middle here. And this is a case where we could then center justify that wall, make sure you put your offset back to zero. And we'll just select midpoint to midpoint. And then we know the wall is centered between our two CMU walls. So that takes care of the two toilet rooms. And then we'll go to the other side of the core where we have some mechanical and electrical rooms. These again are JIP partitions, but they need to be one hour rated. So we're going to switch our wall type again and use the example partition one hour. And since these are rated partitions, they again will go to the underside of the slab. So I want to make sure that is set to 14 foot eight inches. And again, I'm going to use the left justify and we'll start up here. I can draw that wall across here and then I can come down here. Now in this one, I'm going to use some of the AccuDraw that we learned in the last course. So I'm gonna come down and I really just wanna to snap to this column line. So I'm gonna use my enter key to lock my axis and then snap to the column line. Now I need to come over in this direction. And the dimension in the books tells us that this electrical room needs to be six feet. So that's from the column line and then an additional six feet. So this is where I could use that offset origin key in. So if I snap to the intersection of the column line, and then type O on my keyboard, it moves the AccuDraw compass to that location. And now I can work from here. So now I can go an additional six feet. So I'm just going to type six. Now I'm on that location. I can left click to accept that. And now I can move in this direction. However, that six feet is to the inside face of the wall and we can see our placement line is, is on sort of the outside face of that wall. So I can switch my justification while I'm placing it. So I can come up here 
and switch to a right justify. And see how it, my placement line stays in the same location, but the wall switches to the other side. Now I can select enter and I'm, I'm locked on that axis. And then I'm just going to snap to my, my wall up here. And then a right to click to reset. And we see how that all gets cleaned up. And I'm going to switch back to my left and just draw the last wall here. Well, and I still have this wall that we're going to offset by five feet again. And now I have the mechanical and electrical rooms and the service area in front of the lift. So we've modeled all the walls. Now we'll go and do the doors. So again, I'm just going to select my door. And we're going to use this example flush single for most of these doors. And I'll start here with the two doors at the toilet rooms. And I want those to be placed either side of our, our partition here. So I'm going to set my placement point on the hinge side of the door. You can select which origin you want. We're going to use the hinge side of the door. I want to double check my dimensions. So I'm going to do a three foot door or 900 millimeters with a height of seven feet or 2100 millimeters. The other property you want to check on here is this frame depth match wall. So in other words, it will adjust the frame depth of the door to match the thickness of the wall. And then if I come up to my placement ribbon, I can also put in an side offset. So that is the offset between the origin I choose or the placement point and the origin of the door. So I want to be able to choose that corner point and then have the door offset six inches from that. So I've set the side offset to six inches and then I will just come select my wall where I'm placing the door, then the the intersection there. And then the next point determines which side of my placement point the offset occurs. So I'm going to select this one and then the final point determines the direction of the swing. So we place the first door and then again the same wall but this time I'll salute, choose that intersection, which side to offset and then direction of the swing. So I've got those two doors placed. Come and see those in the model. Then we're going to do the same on our stair doors. Now this is the lobby floor, so those stair doors are going to swing out. This is where they exit from the stair. And so it's going to swing this way, but I'm going to offset from this corner. And so in this case, I'm going to select the opposite placement point. The rest of the dimensions will be the same and we're going to use the same side offset. So I'm simply going to select the wall and then the corner, the side of the offset, and then the swing direction. And we'll come and do the same on this side. And then we have the door into the service area. This one, I'm going to go back to the hinge side select the wall and the corner and the swing direction. Now we'll do the same for the electrical room. However, you'll, you'll notice in the diagram in the book that we've actually shown a 45 degree swing on this door and that's just so it doesn't conflict with the swing of the mechanical room door. And so we can do that in the properties of the dialog. We can control the, the leaf angle. So for instance, if we use leaf one angle and change that to a 45, you'll see that the, the 2D graphic showing the door swing is adjusted. So once we do that, again, we're going to use the same settings. And we can place that door. And we can do the same with a double door. So we're going to use the example flush double. And with a double door, you can actually control the angle of both swings. So for instance, we could show one swing to be 45 degrees and still leave the other swing at 90 degrees. And so we'll select the wall and the intersection and then our swing direction. And now we have our basic core modeled. I go ahead and close the dialog. I can also come up to my references dialog, and this is that core layout that we referenced in. I could 
detach it. If, we, if we're done with it, we could detach it. Or if I think I might want to refer back to it, I could simply display off that reference. I'll go ahead and close. Now one last thing I could do here as a double check, make sure I got the, the fire ratings correct on all my walls. So there is a display style set up here that is example wall fire rating. So it's going to highlight the walls in different colors based on their fire rating. So I'm going to select that and apply it here to the model and you'll note that all the walls in red are two hour walls. The walls in blue are one hour walls and then the gray are non-rated. And so we can see that we've got our walls placed correctly, at least in terms of the fire ratings. And that was simply done with a display rule and a display style. And I can use my view previous tools to switch back to the previous display style. So that's a good check on your work. Now that we have this core laid out, in the next session we'll take a look at placing stairs and we'll get two stairs placed in our core. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.